you go into the gym. You want success. You want results. You have to do something about it. You just can't hope for it. You can't expect it just to happen because you showed up. You can't just expect it to happen because you did a few of these and a few of those, and you know you ate some protein and all that stuff. You have to take action. You have to demand it from the universe. You have to demand it from your workouts and insist that it happens right now, here and now. And without that kind of lead up, I mean, you're just spinning your wheels. You're not really doing anything. You're just pretending to be some kind of bodybuilder or something like that. Week before the gym, week before the workout, you have to be thinking about the workout. The days before, you have to just all of a sudden daydream about what it's going to feel like. The night before, especially the night before, as you're eating your meal and as you're going over in your head that you've rested and you're fully glycogenated and you're going to have a good workout, you have to expect the good workout. You can't just think it's going to happen. You have to expect it. You have to already have. You have to already have practiced it in your mind. In your mind, in your workout, you have to imagine what the bar is going to feel like in your hands or on your back. You have to have this kind of mental rehearsal to get any kind of results. You just can't go there on gym day and go, "Okay, I'm here. I showed up. I'm going to do a few of these and a few of those, and take your pre-workout thing and then all that stuff." You have to. Do a lot more than just show up the night before the workout. Okay, you're thinking about it. You're envisioning the workout. You've practiced it many times, multiple times already the week before. Even though before the week before, you've already thought about it in your mind to some degree. You had some kind of reference point. You had some kind of daydream. As you progress to the night before, you think about what's going to happen. You've already done it, but you're thinking about what, how are you going to bring it to fruition? How are you going to bring it to reality? And you go over the daydream in your mind. You eat good. Make sure you get your rest. On the way to the gym, you have to start getting those sweaty palms. You have to start getting anxious. If you don't get anxious anymore, and all you do is listen to some kind of music or something like that, and you're just Thinking that you're doing it, you're not doing it. Turn around, and go home. If that's the case, do something else. Take up another sport, something that's not so hard. You just can't show up. You just can't pretend. You have to demand from the workout that you're going to get results, and you have to have workouts in your brain already before. You have to have the results already in your brain before you can get there. You have to expect success because you rehearsed it in your brain, in your mind. You get to the gym. You've had sweaty palms. You're anxious. Your heart's beating faster. When you get there, it's like you're a kid in a candy store. There's the machine. There's the squat rack. There's the exercise I'm doing over there. When you're warming up, when you're stretching, you're not just stretching. You're getting in the mood. You're getting ready to accept the challenge. You're 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 getting ready to do what it's going to take. And、it's going to take all of you. It's going to take every ounce of your being, everything you got. And if you give it any less than everything you totally got, and you're not totally spent. You're not doing enough. When you get to the point and you got five more reps, you get five more reps. But then you got five more, and somehow, by some act of God, and you're you're praying to God that you have to get five more reps. You do, and you will. Whenever you got five more reps, you usually you have ten. You can't just say,、oh, "Okay, I got five more reps." It has to be five more reps. It has to be everything within you has to be able to go to the table, go to the bar, go to the rack, go to the exercise you're doing, and demand it, insist it, and you have to become the muscle. You are the muscle. The muscle. You're an addict. The muscle is an addict for workouts. The muscle is an addict for tension. The muscle is an addict for stress on the muscle. And when you get to the gym, you're the addict. You're the muscle. 
Life as you know it doesn't really not exist anymore. All you are is a muscle. That was an intention. You're the muscle you're thinking about. You become that muscle, and all that matters, and all that you care about in the world is is tension, and going after each and every single rep and executing each and every single rep and getting more when you say you can't, and getting five more reps when you're done, and even getting five more reps when you think you're done. And then until you achieve failure, either you fall in the rack. Do some half ones. You can't hang on to the bar anymore, and somehow you do, but it falls to the ground, and that's usually an indication that the set might be over. This is what you have to give it. You have to give it this much, otherwise, why are you doing this in the first place? You're not going to get results. Even if you get lucky, you get some kind of small facsimile of maybe results. But you dress nice, maybe you eat the protein. You have to demand it. You have to promise yourself. This is it right here. You have to promise yourself that you will not ever be a failure. You have to marry this thought pattern. So when you get to the gym, I don't care if you're on your deathbed and you're dying and it hurts and anything. You have to promise yourself before you get there that you are not going to go home a loser. I would rather die than acknowledge to myself that I'm that loser. There is nothing that I won't do. There's nothing that I won't do to avoid being a loser. And if you think you could have done more, you're a loser. I do not ever want to go home from the gym going, "I'm a loser. I could have done more. I should have, could have." You have to make a promise to yourself that you will never, ever go there or do that, and you will fight to the death to maintain your promise to yourself. The nice thing about bodybuilding is you're not just competing with another human; you're not trying to dominate another human being. You're dominating yourself, and to dominate yourself, you've got to promise yourself that you will go the distance each and every single time. And in the face of death, in the face of failure, you get five more reps. In the eyes of, if. If dying, you'll figure out a way to get more. In the eyes of failure, you're ready to start. If you don't think you can do this, don't. If you are doing it and wonder why you're not getting the kind of results you you should be getting or would like to have, this is what you got to do. This is what you have to do. I am. There is no question in my mind. You have to be to this point in your life where you go. There's no question. This is what I got to do. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to get results, or I'm not going to do it, and I'm going to do something else. You decide. In the gym, achieve failure. In the gym, achieve failure. But when you're uncomfortable, is when you grow. When you're in the gym and it hurts and you don't feel strong, that's when you grow. I mean, there are many times where I, I looked at myself and said, "Do I really have what it takes?" I mean, I was always wondering if I should keep going, and the answer was always, "I have to. I have to. I got to get up. I got to keep. I got to keep moving forward, no matter what." I always believe in training hard, real stupid, brutal hard. Some people b- believe that. Training to failure is when they want to stop. It's not when you want to stop. My way of training is I pretend I have a wet towel. I want every drop out of that towel. I won't give up. I won't give it up until I get every single drop out of the towel in terms of my training a muscle, a given muscle. I mean, there's no holding back. There's no playing around. There's no just doing it for Facebook or Instagram. You know, this was like training to me was life and death. Crazy! I gave gave it that much, and was it worth it? Hell yes! The feeling is wonderful. There's nothing you can't do. You just when you give it that much to, to something, you feel good about yourself. If I give everything I got, I can't lose because I can't give any more. I'll keep finding ways to give more. I would squat twice a month, twice a month at my very best, at my very strongest. That's all I squatted. Imagine doing 50 reps, you know, with 405 pounds. I mean, it's, it's your nervous system is fried. You want to walk out the door a damn loser? You want to walk out the door a winner? Imagine walking out the door a loser. I'd rather die. I would rather die than be that loser guy.
I'll, I'll, I'll fight to the death. And you'll be a fucking loser if you don't. It sounds crazy, but you gotta give it that much. If you want results, otherwise you'll be like everybody else. The majority of the population, they think they're praying hard. That was hard. Something really devastating happened in my life, gave me the opportunity to have something great happen. 1981, my fiance, the girl I was gonna marry, left me for my training partner. I came home from the 80 Olympia and they're together. I'm like, oh my God. I was so hurt and so baffled that this girl could do this to me. I was shocked, I was startled. I'm like, oh my God. The hurt, the pain, the terrible trauma. So I wanted to go over and just kill the guy. I thought I was gonna put a dumbbell through his head, you know? But I decided to take all that energy and put it into the gym. I just opened the door to the Gold's Gym that year and boom, everything would work. It was a magical year. Any exercise I did was, wow, mind-blowing. All the hurt went into my training. I would train like every day. And every day was better and better. I was always wondering if I should keep going. And the answer was always, I have to, I have to. As I promised myself, problems, depression, self-doubt, it was really a gift. It's hard to understand it at that time. But I always find years later, Anything negative that happened to me turned out to be an opportunity in disguise. And I look at life that way. The, all winners have lost. All winners have got depressed. All winners have been heartbroken. All winners have been disappointed and confused and frustrated and angry. But they kept moving forward. That's the only reason they're winners. Don't give up on your dreams. Bodybuilding gave me a life. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. Somebody dies, something happens to you, you lose money, you get physically injured, whatever, you get divorced. But you know something? We're supposed to feel that. We're supposed to go through those things to have the opposite. You gotta have sadness to have happiness. But it gave me a, an opportunity. Opportunity is disguised as problems. There are many times where I looked at myself and said, do I really have what it takes? And the answer was like, I gotta get up. I gotta keep moving forward no matter what. I'm scared to death of leaving the gym knowing I'm a loser, not really giving it everything I got. I can't do that. I'd rather die. I think a lot of modern day athletes don't have the work ethic and the desire. In my day, it was either become a priest or a bodybuilder. That kind of life devotion. I would give my entire life, God, to this exercise and this whatever it is I chose to do in life. And I did. There's no holding back, there's no playing around. There's no just doing it for Facebook or Instagram. Training to me was life and death. We put limitations on ourselves as humans. We think that 10 or 15 is enough. There's more in you, there's always more in you. There's always five more reps. And I think with that kind of mentality, you can get through anything.